Hey everyone, my name is Ranger here. This is going to be week number two of the APA Academy, and we are up against Slack Out and his Northern Weavile's, and he has a very, very scary team. Uh, we do have a Faramosa, and I've lost to a Faramosa the one time that I played against one back against Gohan in the PCL Season 2, and this is a really scary overall matchup. It also has the Moltres, the Diggers B, the Giratina Origin. Um, or no, I'm sorry, this is Giratina Altered, but also the, just the Selby and the Ambipom. You can see my team. I think my team matches up reasonably well. I have a max special attack, Modest, Scarf, Palkia, which really interacts well with this team, and it's absolutely going to be my, my win con, but I'm going to go right into the matchup. I'm going to lead off with my Zygarde. It felt like as good as a lead as anything, and it kind of managed most of what he would want to do, but he ends up leading off with the Fermosa. So right off the bat, I'm thinking a lot of thoughts right now. I'm thinking he could be... Uh, he could have Ice Beam, he could just be a pivoting U-turn, he could do anything right now. But, I think what's going to be most important here is just going to be getting off a of Bandit Extreme Speed, and we do so much damage to this Faramosa. We don't quite KO, but that is a lot of damage to be doing, and, and I feel really confident that that's going to set me up for the overall, like, look of this match. But from here, he just goes for the U-turn, which is totally, totally fine. Uh, I'm, again, I'm feeling confident that I'm either going to be able to hit this thing with priority. I do have Aqua Jet on my Blastoise as well as Extreme Speed on this. I'm going to be able to hit it with some priority later on in the match. Or uh, I can word down to hazards or things of that nature. I'm going to switch out here. I'm going to go into my pretty, into pretty much my dedicated answer because he actually did not bring the Sylveon. And this thing was meant for the Sylveon. But I'm going to go into my Solgaleo here. And this is a pretty much max special defense Solgaleo. Uh, I do have Toxic because I didn't really expect him to want to see in. I might just knock off here actually. Uh, but the Moltres is going to come in, and Moltres is looking reasonably scary here. I do feel confident that I can take one hit being as specially defensive as I am, and just, you know, being a gosh dang Sogaleo. But, oh, okay, I do get a Toxic off, expecting him to switch out. But, uh, from here, I do want to get kind of get a feel for what he's trying to do. Although, um, I was a little bit concerned about the Z-move, although he wasn't a Z-move either. But in my head, uh, that, that was my first thought as, as soon as this thing came out, that he was going to try to Z-move me, but, um... He ends up pulling a double back into the Celebi, which is really scary for me because he called me out that I was going to want to switch out here. I do end up going into my uh, Mammoth Swine. Now, here, I, my Mammoth Swine has enough speed to barely outspeed a no-speed Celebi. And even then, I should be able to take a hit okay, maybe? But this Celebi is a reasonably fast Celebi as well as max special attack timid I believe so enter I had no chance of taking the energy ball and that's going to put me in a really bad spot overall um I, that is honestly one of the most regrettable turns of this matchup if I played that out better I mean who knows what would have happened but uh I really did not expect him to play so aggressively especially when I could potentially double back into my Solgaleo but regardless it's going to allow my Solgaleo in I'm going to get a knockoff on the switch which um I knew that a some kind of a switch was coming and knockoff kind of handled overall his team the best. I do, um, I am able to get a knockoff into a toxic on the next turn because I wasn't too, too afraid of anything that this thing could really hit me with. Uh, he does go for the shadow ball, which was pretty scary, but I take that okay. I take that okay. And I'm healthy enough where I can still take on the Selby. I can still kind of manage around his team a little bit and um, I kind of expected him to try to wear me down. Obviously, he can't toxic me, but um, I'm more so expecting him to want to try to will with me. So here I go straight out into my answer for this thing. Um, my dedicated kind of check to this thing that I can eat up a will o wisp and still be able to deal with it. Oh no, but he does go for the Shadow Ball. But now, uh, he's pretty much free to kind of hit me. I, that did honestly more, more damage than I would have expected it to. And it kind of catches me off guard a little bit but um i did have swords dance it wasn't even worth going for in this moment i just click knock off he tries to hit me again and um i'm gonna go down we're both gonna go down this i think this is gonna be a double down oh he also crits me which i mean neat right um if he didn't crit me it wouldn't have been a double down we, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have had to you know guess our guess each other's situations in this way and it would have given me a little bit of momentum because whatever he brings in i can sack off the hair cross and get a little bit of momentum going that way but again i'm gonna go uh back to my pretty standard lead he um he goes into his diggers b i go into my zygarde and uh here's another situation so i had to be obviously the most likely scenario this thing is going to be scarfed but i thought to myself uh, he could be agility, double dance, some, some, some kind of a set like that. And if he was inclined to agility up in that scenario, then it would leave me in a really bad spot if I didn't attack into it. So I wanted to just go for the thousand arrows. And obviously that wasn't 
the strongest play, especially uh, just because I would have gotten a decent amount of chip damage. I think Extreme Seed would have done around half to that thing, but uh, he's able to U-turn into his um, into his Feromosa, which confirms Scarf on the Diggersby, and then Feromosa gets a U-turn off on my Palkia, which confirms Scarf on that. He is dual Scarf out here with a uh, U-turn, which just, just does so much damage. I'm able to click Spatial Ren, lock myself into that. He sacks off his Ambipom. I do get a crit. I don't think that crit ever mattered, but um, regardless, I would have... I would have been able to hit it uh, next turn anyway. He goes back into his Scarfed Feromosa, and now he kind of knows that I'm on really, really on a back foot. And having a max defensive Blastoise really does stink when I'm not when I'm in the back, but not Mega Evolved yet, because uh, I do gain a decent amount of bulk by by uh, Mega Evolving, and he crits me on a low kick. I don't think that would have mattered too too much, but uh, there's just crits flying around any everywhere at this point. And here, I wish I had made. A slightly better play because he does uh, go into his uh, Celebi. I almost said Clefable. but I don't know where my head's at. Hey, regardless, he goes into a Celebi, and I felt forced to go in to go for the Aqua Jet. I thought maybe he thought that it was going to be a defensive check, and he felt safe staying in on this because um, I was basically sacking off for a better matchup. But it turns out, uh, I guess he knew what was up, and he just uh, switched out into the Celebi. Which pretty much negated my Aqua Jet, although it would have uh, taken it out in the situation, which does suck, but whatever. It does allow me to go into my Sogaleo, and I end up, I want to say, clicking Toxic here? No, okay. I probably clicked Knock Off here. I probably clicked Knock Off here. I did honestly kind of forget a little bit that this Moltres was still in the back. Oh no, I pulled a double. Wow, okay. I surprised myself, but this will allow me to go into the Palkia. And I am Scarf. I'm pretty much going to, I think, claim a KO in this situation. Uh, he doesn't really have... I don't know. It, it, it really depends on how bulky the Selby is. And um, we have seen that it's reasonably fast. We have seen that it's really offensive. But I didn't know until after the match just how offensive it was. It really didn't have the most bulk attached to it. But um, I felt like I had to go for the C for play and just uh, click that Scarf Surf. So now he knows for sure, for sure that I'm Scarfed if he ever... You know, if that was ever uh, even a question. But now I think he's going to know that he has me in kind of a checkmate position. And he's had me in a little bit of a checkmate position for a little bit now. But I'm going to end up uh, going into my Sogaleo because I got at least try to play off of something. This could. It was honestly a sack. Hey, this was better as a sack because. By the Moltres going down, by the Moltres going down, it, it's going to allow me to lock into Ice Beam with my Palkia. And that's actually going to mean that uh, Palkia has a path to winning if the if I can manage the Feromosa. And honestly, I'm kind of out of checks at this point. The only thing that I have left that would potentially check a Feromosa would be uh, Aqua Jet on my Blastoise. And I'm really not in any position to take uh, many more hits, but uh, realistically, my thinking here was that if I was ever in a position where I could lock into Ice Beam, then that is a and the Feromosa wasn't there, then that, that would be a potential lock, uh, path to victory. But I get taken out here. I'm gonna uh, go for a differential point a little bit here. And I'm just going to, like I said, be able to uh, lock in Ice Beam. It was even a question, I think, whether or not. Um, I outsped this thing Scarfed, but no, um, I think I made it so that I, I always outsped Scarfed, and I think I was going to be fine here, but again, just that dual Scarf, and not having the best answers to Feromosa, I felt like, yeah, Feromosa was in a position through the entire match where it could pivot around me, and I really didn't have much of a counterplay at all, um, and I couldn't do anything about a Scarf Feromosa, I have nothing that can outspeed a Scarf Feromosa. Um, and I don't even think he brought like any type of max speed, but I didn't have anything that could even like break any speed barriers And he probably had certain speed barriers in mind where um, He felt comfortable not going full investment in on that, but that is going to be week two uh, Like I said, I did what I could I really did like my build. I thought my build interacted well with his I think um, I think the Sogaleo was passive for what I was trying to do here and I do just kind of wish that a few other turns had gone my way, but I think the biggest thing of anything was giving up the Mammoth Swine because the Mammoth Swine would have given me one last 
bit of priority in the back it would have done a decent amount of damage against his team and uh maybe between the extreme speed the ice shard and the aqua jet i could have gotten rid of that pheromosa and once Polky was able to lock an ice beam i think that would have gone my way but that's honestly just gonna have to be how the match ends uh thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the ata academy with more weeks of the pgp league war with um more weeks of the icb playoffs hopefully coming really really soon but once again with that thank you guys so much for watching gonna be once again